Hey everyone, my name is JC Daly. I am the teacher librarian at Castleberry High School. I'm going to introduce you today to our student resources and context, which is our general research database published through Gale. Um, one reason we really push the databases is because it provides sources um, for students that are pre-screened, they are credible. Um, at the high school level, we are preparing our students for the next step in college, and they will for sure be needing to use databases there. Um, we've really made a push in the district to talk to our students about credible resources. What is a credible resource? Where do we find credible resources? How do we know it's a credible resource? And using the databases takes all of the guesswork out of whether or not a source is credible or not. So um, this is the high school library database page. Um, even if you are at the middle school, all of our library web pages um, should be set up fairly streamlined. So you should be able to find the same information in a similar position on the middle school library web page. So in order to access student resources and context, I'm going to click on Gale. And whenever you click on this the first time or when our students click on it for the first time, they will be taken to a login screen. It's going to ask for a password. I have the password published right here. It is Go Lions. And then you can scroll down to the bottom of the green um, section. Student resources and context is the database that we want. And you can go ahead and click into here. And the cool thing about Gale is that once you understand and once you know about one database, the rest of their databases are set up very similar and they all operate together. Um, so that's one super cool thing about Gale. Another one that is my absolute favorite resource with Gale is that they are streamlined to work with Google. Um, they're very interactive with Google. So in order to sign into the Gale database, all students need to do is sign in with their Gaggle email address and they will have access to their Google Drive. They can save any highlights, any notes, um, any citations, full articles straight from the Gale database into their Google Drive. So I am going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, so now I'm signed in. Um, if you scroll down through the student resources and context, they have topics here. So if students are researching a very specific topic, um, they have those there for them, especially if they're new to research and the research process, that might be um, a good way to help them sort through some things. Um, Let's just click on social issues, and if you click on view all, you can see all of the social issues that they have prepared for you or for our students. Um, you can click on any one of these topics, and it takes you straight into a, a search for them. Um, you can see here the featured content. It tells you primary sources reference resources, there are 128 audio clips, over a thousand newspaper articles about post-traumatic stress disorder, um, 277 magazines, as well as videos, and the citations to the videos are included, so they can actually use a video as a resource in their research project, and there are also critical essays. Um, in order to access one of these resources, um, you can, like if I wanted to see the whole 1200 options that are available, I can click on that. Um, this yellow square right here shows you the Lexile level, so the, the student's reading level. This shows to be an intermediate reading level. Intermediate, I would say, is probably going to be your 
um, pretty good readers at this point. Um, this is for secondary readers. Um, you can also search over here, sort by content level. And it looks like intermediate is the earliest option. I was hoping it would show some beginner options as well. If you do have struggling readers, um, you can show them how to search by um, beginning level only. Um, you would have to do your own search, though, if you wanted specific um, content level searches. Okay, so I am going to click on an article here just to show you kind of how Gale works. Um, if you look at this article, um, it looks like a, you know, the newspaper article. It's published right here in the Washington Post. Over here are my tools. If I click on citation tools, it pulls out the citation and it is formatted appropriately in MLA 7th edition format. I have the option of downloading that to my Google Drive. Or um, if for some reason you're requiring APA, you can click on APA and it changes the citation to fit the format that you are requiring in your classroom. Most of us here at the high school do MLA, although there is um, kind of a push to move toward APA. Seems like that's mostly what students are introduced to in college nowadays. Um, okay, so there's the citation. If I'm scrolling through here, I can um, make highlights. So we're doing research, we're preparing to do research. So if a student has their outline um, and their outline's color-coded by different sections of the paper, the introduction, um, maybe early warning signs of PTSD, diagnostic criteria of PTSD, uh, most affected population with PTSD. So just some different, um, just an outline. If they're color coded, they have all of these choices. They could also color code their notes. And I think that this is really cool because it allows students to take their notes straight from the database. So I am going to highlight this in purple. And I've not read this article, so I'm not sure. I'm just going to put include this in symptoms gather more research for this topic okay and then I'm gonna hit save okay and if I scroll down um, here's something else I want to take a note on but it would actually fit better in a different section I can highlight it in a different color, the color that coordinates with that section on my outline. I could write a note. Um, what does this mean? Find out more. I could also annotate um, this information here. So if I annotated this information, um, what happens is Whenever I go over here to download in my tools, choose download, have the option to save to Google Drive, which is what I want. If I choose download, it says documents have been sent to Google Drive and will appear shortly. So, okay, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna sign into Google. So I'm signed in, I'm going to go to my Google Drive. And Gale automatically creates a folder for their articles. 
um, the student resources and context. It has the little orange folder. So I'm going to click there. And then I think this is it right here. Yep. You're the worst. That's a PTSD for a laugh. Okay, so when I scroll through here, now it's on a document, and not only does it can keep my highlights, but if I scroll down to the bottom, it has pulled out the text that I highlighted and put my notes right there. So if I'm a student doing a research paper, I have not only my quotation, if I wanted to use a quotation, but I also have my annotation that I could just use in my paper. So instead of the quotation, I have an annotated um, paper. I can cut and paste those notes into, because it's my own work, so I can cut and paste it in the order of my outline, and largely my research paper is done. Um, I have the citation right up here that's included. It doesn't get much easier than that as far as research, and this is one reason why I love, love, love our Gale database for research. If you have questions or if you would like to partner with your teacher librarian on your campus, we would be more than happy to work with you to partner with your students um, to teach them the databases or to teach you the databases better so that um, you feel more comfortable with them. Whatever you need from us, please let us know. Um, we're excited that you are getting ready to set this up. All right, um, thank you for watching.